Hi, let me get this light on. Is that better? <laughs> Hi. Hello, Blair. Sorry. Welcome to Titi's Urban Pantry, and I'm canning some tomatoes and okra today. Um, I've got nothing prepped. I only have the jars, um, the cans of tomatoes opened. Other than that, I have nothing prepped, so you're going to do it all with me today. But thank you for joining me. Yay. Happy Saturday. And can I tell you, that 9 o'clock be sneaking up. Jump up all you before you know it. It is 8.30 and then it's 8.45 and then it's 9 o'clock. I hope you can hear me. I'll wait for people to come to the room. So I am canning some tomatoes in okra. I have canned this before. Mr. loves it, so we don't want to run out. And we are out, so I'm going to make some more. Um, I think what I'm going to do right now is... I am going to go ahead and start cutting up my okra. It's already washed, um, but it needs to be cut up. I had originally planned for 12 pounds of tomatoes and four pounds of okra. However, hi, Gina. Thanks for joining me. However, the store, I took all the okra and there was only two pounds, so I'm going to have to cut it. So I have six pounds of tomatoes actually i have seven cans of um seven 14 ounce cans of tomatoes and i if i did my math right that should equal six pounds and two pounds of okra so the okra's already washed i'm gonna go ahead and start getting it cut here's my pot so here's my okra. Two pounds of that. I'm just gonna cut these ends off and then just cut them. The okras and tomatoes are being canned together. My mister loves him some okra and he likes the okra and tomatoes. So this works well for him. And these will be pressure canned. talking and can't hear me. All you do is just 
prep your okra and your tomatoes. I am not using fresh tomatoes. I have my cans of tomatoes here at seven, 14 ounce cans of tomatoes. Get those together, heat them up, season them if you want, and bam, tomatoes and okra. Yes, you can hear me? Sweet, thank you. So this is a really easy pressure can recipe. Ingredients to make the barbecue sauce. I was going to make it tonight while you were canning, but I'm too tired now. I was saying that nine o'clock sneaks up on you. I'm relaxed all day. You know, mentally preparing, make sure I got everything I need. And the next thing you know, it's 830. do today we got up and we have like an annual festival here in town so we got up and went there this morning actually it was more like this afternoon um and we have what is called junk food alley basically a bunch of like carnival food and we ate so much and even took so much home with us. I did do a little video and see all the good foods that they have down there. Well, I guess good looking food. It's not really good for you, but it's nice to splurge every now and then. Almost done. I know you're supposed 
to have more okra than tomatoes. I feel like I got more, or no, I'm sorry, more tomatoes than okra, but I feel like I got more okra than tomatoes. Good thing is I have plenty of tomatoes in the pantry. All right, so that's it. Here's the okra. I'm going to turn the heat on. And then I'll start adding the tomatoes. Here's one can here. bring these up to a boil and then um, they just need to simmer. chat Joanne she says I want some okra by itself <laughs> well I got it at Kroger <laughs> too late she put it tomatoes in <laughs> um let me go back up in chat make sure I didn't miss anything I don't think so so um it says bring to a boil over medium heat, reduce heat and boil gently for 15 minutes and then we'll just hot pack it in our jars. I, once this starts boiling and I um, take it down, I will um, prep the pressure canner because I haven't done anything with that yet. So I'll prep that so you can see how I do that. And that's it. Really easy recipe. Now I have to make my mom her own batch. <laughs> she just wants okra. Like I said, she got it at Kroger. I did take it all though, because I had wanted more okra than that. And I took it all. That's only two pounds. So might want to make wait till they restock. But that is it. We're pressure canning it so we don't need to add any citric acid. We don't need to add any lemon juice to it. Um, and that's it. It says salt is optional, but I went ahead and put salt in it anyway. So we're good to go. Good. Got little Oprah bits everywhere. Look what I 
got in the mail today. It's my Scoby. Hi, Angela. Can't stay long, but I wanted to stop by and say hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. It smells like vinegar. As I'm opening this, I smell, I smell vinegar. It's ready, y'all. It's ready. So I asked Lydia, I was like, what should I do with this? Should I put it in the refrigerator until I'm ready? She almost took my head off. She said, no. <laughs> no. Get, get your jar, get whatever jar you need to put it in, sanitize it, and that's your Scoby Hotel. So I got my jar in the um, dishwasher, and I will sanitize it. I plan on starting my kombucha tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to definitely get it in that hotel. <laughs> I need to read the instructions Lydia sent me. I have them, but I have not gone over them or anything. And my fermentation kit arrived today. I did the same thing. <laughs> my fermentation kit arrived today. So I'm excited to really get to fermenting. I got this kombucha from the store. So she took it. But I had got this brand from Walgreens after G Lydia's live last week because I was like, I need some kombucha. And this is ginger lemon. I feel like they put a lemon fork or a ginger forest in here. This is spicy. So I could not drink it. I'm going to have to water it down or something. I could not drink it. But this brand had a watermelon and that was really good. So when I went to Kroger today, I was looking for some and they only had this ginger lemon. So I got this brand, which is the Kroger brand. Simple Truth Organic Kombucha Cranberry Apple with Live Probiotics. This don't taste like kombucha. This, it ain't got that, that fizziness. <laughs> so you do, the only store kombucha I like is the Simple Truth. Okay, I like this. We, I just opened it and see how much I drank. Even Mr. was like, oh, okay. I can I can hang with that. But yeah, I do like this, but it don't taste spicy like this does. So I'm like, is it real kombucha or not? <laughs> so this is boiling. I'm gonna turn it down. And then we just gotta wait 15 minutes. So I'm gonna prep the pressure canner. And it's sticking to the bottom, so I'm gonna turn it way down. So here's my pressure canner. It is a 16 quart, I believe Presto. And to get it started, I just need to put in three quarts of water. So I'm using this. My rack is already in there and I have my weight. My jar looks suspect. And then I have my jars ready to go. So what I like to do so they don't all tip over or float to the top is I will put a little bit of water in each jar and just sit it in there. And I have eight, I believe. 
eight one pint jars. I might need more than that. I'm going to go grab a couple more jars, two more jars, just because I think I'm going to need more. get the strawberry lemon one okay I don't have that I grabbed this one too I thought they were the same brand it's synergy raw kombucha watermelon wonder it says What is kombucha and what is it for so kombucha is a fermented tea and it's it is acidic so mommy you probably could not drink it because you can't do the acid and everything but um it's really good for your gut health and i know in this jar it says um it's detoxifying it is a living probiotic so if you take probiotic pills you can just drink this and get your probiotics that way um, and it's full of natural antioxidants. Thank you, Angela. It's a fermented tea and it's good for good gut health. Yep. Um, it might be closer to what we make. I oh, Okay, sweet. I was reading the ingredients in some kombucha and they have a lot of additives and one brand used apple cider vinegar. Okay. I felt like... I drink apple cider vinegar in my water and I felt like when I was drinking this health aid kombucha, like I was drinking the apple cider vinegar. So it doesn't say it on its ingredients, but I have a feeling that's what this is, but I really enjoy this. I wouldn't give this to my daughter. Mimi couldn't have this. Read the ingredients on the Synergy because I think it has additives. It says ingredients, GT's, kombucha, black tea, green tea, kiwi juice, fresh pressed watermelon juice, cherry juice, fresh pressed lemon juice and 100% pure love organically produced do not shake I'm looking at what else it says If you are pregnant or breastfeeding please consult your healthcare professional before consuming our product Okay, that's not the one then. Okay. This says they use purified sparkling water, 
black tea, organic sugar, cranberry juice, organic cranberry juice from concentrate and organic apple juice from concentrate. And Bacillus, B-A-C-I-L-L-U-S. And another word I can't pronounce, C-O-A-G-U-L-A-N-S. Collagens? Collagens? So we got about another six minutes on the tomatoes and okra. Marcus, do you want to taste this and see if it needs more salt? Okay. It's looking good. It smells good. So these will just need to be pressure canned for 30 minutes for pints and 35 minutes for quarts. That's it. What brand had the cherry juice? Synergy raw kombucha. So this was at Kroger on in the refrigerator aisle, like where the milk and stuff is, but it was all the way like to the corner, all the way to the door. But they had they had this Health Aid brand, and then they had the Simple Truths brand. With the peach barbecue sauce, did you use the same ingredients as the other and just add the peaches? No, I did not. And actually, that video is edited and ready to be uploaded. So I'll probably um, get it uploaded for tomorrow. But I used um, peaches, onion red pepper and garlic and honey and apple cider vinegar and then like some dry spices to season it and everything and i have i believe the recipe is in this book that i'm looking at let's see Yep, so it's called Zesty Peach Barbecue Sauce. Um, six cups of peaches, one red pepper, one cup of onion, three tablespoons of garlic. I I did a couple like cloves. I just put my own in. No tomatoes. No, ma'am, no tomatoes. Honey, vinegar, W sauce. Um, pepper flakes, dry mustard, and salt. So that's pretty easy. It was good too. That's the salsa. It's all downstairs, so I can't show you. But yeah, that was good. And these need to be filled to one inch headspace. So one inch headspace, 30 minutes for a pint. Interesting, interesting. It was good though. Um, I put cumin in it and I believe like it off camera, I, don't think I said this, but I put cumin and some smoked paprika in it just to kind of have like have that taste really hit you, really jump out at you. But it was very good. I bought some more peaches today. I've already eaten. This. We haven't even opened ours yet. Peach truck is coming next Sunday. 
Um, so round two. So we will be having um, going back to the peach truck next Sunday. Um, I told Marcus they can time. hear you though. Okay, I told Marcus it's time to spray the house again. There's just time to pee in my toilet. Okay, but well, um, also I'm about to get ready. Can I take another time now? Why don't you just wait till you get back? Okay. I'll take a water bottle with me instead. I called hi, homestead in the hood. I called um, grandma was on live with you, she was in the chat. Oh, is she still there? I don't know. Say hi, grandma. Grandma. So I have about five more minutes and then I can start canning that up. I'm okay, Mimi. Why? Grandma. Well, if she's in there and she says something, it's got a little bit of a delay. She said hi, Mimi. Hi, Grandma. She said hi, Grandma. <laughs> It's so good. Okay, we're going to have to bust it open. I have been on this Fritos. I know we were talking about like the fake cheese and stuff last week, but I've been on this Fritos jalapeno cheddar cheese mix and Doritos. So I got to finish this off first. I've been killing it. <laughs> I'm going to check my pressure canner and make sure that water's heating up. I don't hear anything. So I want these jars in here to be hotter. The jars in the pressure canner, the temperature needs to match the temperature of this so you don't have any um, thermal shock. So I'm gonna let those get good and hot. And these should be Another couple of minutes, ready to go. I'll take the jars out right before I'm ready to start with them. Smells good. Those tomatoes. Tomatoes are probably my favorite thing to can. If there's any other canners out there, what's your favorite? Gina, what is your favorite thing to can? All right, so he's coming to taste it just to see if it's got enough salt on it. Look in this drawer, Marcus. The open's not cooked yet. It's gonna get cooked in the pressure pan, Marcus. Well, I'm not tasting just the salt. Yeah. all right yeah all right so it's all right so let's get started okay i'm out you ladies have a good evening save me a jar of tomatoes and okra i want to try it well i've only canned salsa and pasta sauce so far <laughs> i thought about canning the pasta sauce tonight but i felt like it was going to take too long but pasta sauce is probably our one of my favorites too you can't go back to store ball after you have your own Well, I'm going to push this back a little bit so you can see the jars. I don't want to reach over, but I'm going to have to. So these are hot. I need to get all my lids ready. 
and rings. So I'm gonna start with the regular mouth jars. And then if I need them, I'll use the wide mouth jars. I have two of those. One more. Get my rings. Thank you, KK. Hi, Unicorn Lady. Just canning some tomatoes and okra. Turn that off. Easy recipe. Really easy. And it will thicken up a little bit in the canner too. get all the chunky ingredients in and then finish off with the liquid. I have not debubbled any of these. I'm really just pushing it all down. enough to finish this one which is fine I'll put it in the fridge for Marcus and then debubble everything and then I'll go in and measure it Here, 
So one inch head space for everything. Wipe those really good. the rest in here if you have hard water that's going to help from um there being like etching or those that gray film on there put all of these in here It just needs to vent for 10 minutes. Hi, Josh. Hi, Lisa. See if I missed anyone else. I don't like the okra either. Gina said it was easy. I don't like the okra, though. I don't like it either. But like I said, my mister likes it and it's an easy meal for him. Um, he's a trucker, so he can easily grab a pint, which is why I didn't do any bigger than a pint because that's perfect for him. He can grab a pint and he's got tomatoes and okra whenever he wants it. Oh, so Lisa, yes, you had asked me and Gina and Josh and KK, anyone else out there. So Lisa had put a comment and um, said she wanted to get started canning and didn't know if there was anyone around Greensboro, North Carolina, I believe it was. And my memory sucks. And I'm like, I don't. I can't think off the top of my head if there's anyone from North Carolina, but there are a lot of great channels um, that can and can help you get started. Her Healthy Home is one of them. Um, Lady Cheryl's Organic Food Forest. Lydia Can, Sylvester Journey, and Andell Homestead. Just a lot of great channels. Um, those are all that I can think of off the top of my head right now. I know there's a bunch more. Okra tastes great when you eat it fresh right out the garden. Josh says, what up, TT? Just chilling with the fam about to watch a movie. What movie are you watching? Gina, hey, Josh. <laughs> Smash that like button. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're just waiting on the um, canner to heat up. Here is Best Yet Journey. Hi, Lydia. I showed them my SCOBY. Yes, there's also Grace and Fire cans too. Thank you, Gina. We were just naming off some um, really good canners here on YouTube. Um, Lisa had said that she wanted to get started canning. Didn't know if there was anybody around Greensboro, North Carolina. So um, I was like, well, you know, I'm going live tonight. Why don't you hop on and we can ask and see if there's anyone. Um, I don't think anyone really does any workshops. I just took a really good workshop with my county extension office. So you might want to look and see. Is she ready? You might want to look and see if there is any, um, if your county extension office is ha having any canning classes with crops starting to come in and everything. I'm pretty sure they, they are. They're gearing up for them if they haven't started them already. Um, the class that I took was a week-long class. It was a master class and it was a lecture AM, lab PM. So it was a lot of hands-on. It was really good, informative. And I've been canning for years and I was able to take something away from that. So it was a really good class. Okay, I hear it. I was like, I feel like something should be going on with that pressure canner, but I hear it. So you can see it. It's going to start like spitting out steam. And on mine, you'll be able to see it. So you see the black dot, that is like an emergency dot. So I know like some people have a fear of pressure canning because they feel like it's going to explode. That is like an emergency valve. And when the pressure builds up too much and it can't escape, that little black button will pop out. I have accidentally pushed it out while I was pressure canning and it goes. <laughs> you gotta find it, clean it and everything and put it back in there. But um, it will lift up just a little bit. And then I always have steam coming out right here. Right before, once it started to vent and right before it really starts to rocking and everything. So right here. So I had my sides mixed up. This this will pop up once the pressure builds up. And this is where I always have like water coming out. I did ask them that in my class and they said, you know, it's just, it's nothing to worry about. Um, I forget what they said. Maybe it's just the water's trying to escape somewhere before it actually seals. I'm not sure, but there it is. So once that starts venting out steam, a steady stream, you can see it's doing it now. It's like, toot, 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 toot. <laughs> so once that is a steady stream, can you guys see it? Um, once that is a steady stream, you're going to start your timer for 10 minutes. Once that has vented for 10 minutes, you want to make sure you do that because then that's getting the rest of the air out of that canner. So once it's vented for 10 minutes, then you can either um, put your weight on or start your start your gauge. I don't have a gauge, so I don't know how that works. I did get to, in the class we took, I got to use the All-American canner. Was that bad boy intimidating? <laughs> It was big and sturdy, and that aluminum, man, is it ain't going nowhere. But um, I don't think I can use one because the microwave is right over it. I don't think I can use one. So, Roz, this is my cousin. Hi, Roz. Hey, Tia, that okra and tomatoes look really good. Very healthy eating. I want to try the peach salsa you made. <laughs> I got you. I got you, Roz. Um, but the All-American canner, I would love to have an All-American canner just because if you get the real big one, which is like $300, I think, but you can actually stack on there. So like when I'm doing my spaghetti sauce or vegetable soup, beef soup, I could do one canner load. I mean, I guess I could always just get two of these. 
All right, so you guys tell me, I feel like that's a pretty steady stream. And can you see the stream? We need to get all set up for canning. I'm always making soups from scratch from our dinner. Yes, and few leftovers but ready to eat. That's the thing. I love just being able to grab something. You know, my daughter, she feeling under the weather or it's just cold. Soups are my favorite because they ready to go. They're ready to go. Cheating, you mean? Okay, so I can't tell if you can see it, but the like the little thing just popped up. This. So that means like the pressure is engaged. This is running steady. So we're going to start our timer for 10 minutes and then put the weights on. Okay, so you can see the stream. So 10 minutes, we're looking at about 10.01 to put the weight on. And you can see it's kind of rocking. And actually, I turn that down to a four. I have a really bad habit of letting it um, vent, rock like that, full speed. And then um, your water will evaporate out of the pressure canner and i it's usually when i'm canning something like meat or something that's um or corn where it's like 85 minutes so it's taking a long time to can and i start to smell it and i know that my water has evaporated out of the canner if it's still rocking it's still giving me a steady rock and i know i only have like maybe five or ten minutes to go i'll let it go but if i'm halfway through that process i have to stop I got to stop. It's not going to continue. Got to shut everything down and start over again. So um, for me, I have to remember my stove is electric and I need to turn it down beforehand um, so that it doesn't just boil over and everything and I run out of water in the canner. See the screen? Eyes up, fam. You saw, you saw that? <laughs> You have to put that on a replay somewhere. <laughs> what am I canning next Saturday evening? Um, I don't know. Um, Mister was gonna go to Chicago. Um, I guess there's some Chicago Bears um, players that are gonna do some signings, and he wanted to get a couple jerseys and helmets signed because he's a real big Chicago Bears fan. However, I did hear him asking his dad and Dalton if they what they were doing next weekend. So if Pops and Dalton go, I'm not going to go. If Mr.'s by himself, I'll I'll go. Um, I'm not sure what I'll can next. I was thinking about the Creole sauce because it's been almost two years and I feel like we need that. But I'm always open to any suggestions if anyone wants to see anything specifically canned. So if you got anything, let me know. Put them in the chat. I'm scroll up because I felt like I was missing some stuff. Got me losing the food points and you might be hurting looking down and hold it up. Be crazy. <laughs> um, what am I can? Roz says best yet journey. Love to use canning. I can't, I don't can. You don't have to can, Roz. You know I always got you. Hi, Miss Shirley. Thank you so much for joining. So we got about another five minutes of it venting. So this is my weight that I will put on the top. And one reason it's so important to know your altitude is because if you're high up in altitude, if you're anything over a thousand feet sea level, you need to add more weight. So here's mine. 
And this is five pounds of pressure. Can you see this? This is five pound weight. So I add it on there. Now I have 10 pounds of pressure. And actually another one goes on top. I don't know where it's at. I lost it, but it's fine because it's not like we're gonna go up and sea level, but there's another one on here to give you 15 pounds of pressure. So I will add this onto the top of the pressure canner. It'll go quiet for about 10 minutes and then it'll start rocking. And once that um, starts rocking, I can start my timer for 30 minutes. Creole sauce sounds good. It is good. <laughs> If you can that next week, post the ingredients ahead of time and I'll can it with you. I will. I will. And I'll even um, I'll um, send you something so you know I am. If I don't can it this coming up week, I will do it the following week. I turn that up just a little bit because I don't want that steam to go down and break the steady stream. So kind of playing a, a game. Once this is on and it starts rocking, I can hear it. And usually I've heard people, they say they sit right beside it and everything. Because I can hear this um, and it's an audible um, cue for me, I, I can go into the other rooms. I can walk around the house. I can even hear it from my bedroom. Um, so I am not always in the same room as my canner. Now, I know if you have a dial gauge, you do have to kind of look at that and make sure um, it's right on your pounds of pressure, but I use this. A um, couple more minutes. Everybody's just saying hi to each other. Take a sip of my kombucha. I was a little bit bitter. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for joining me. I don't believe I've ever seen you in the chat, so welcome. We are canning up some tomatoes in okra live. So they are already in the pressure canner. What is your favorite okra recipe? None. I don't even like okra. It's Mr. <laughs> um, I know he likes fried okra. He even likes the pickled okra. I've done a tomatoes and okra soup where it's just a little bit more tomato broth and it's seasoned more. He liked that, but he likes it all. I'm looking for a good cornbread recipe. We lost, aw. You can find one. I know you can find one right here on YouTube Academy. Anybody have any suggestions for a good cornbread recipe for Josh? What? You look good. See, I got green. You want to show them your eye makeup? Show them your eye makeup. Move your bangs. Mimi likes to do makeup. You see? Mm hmm Right. You said it's green. Mm -hmm. like, like green, blue, and glitter blue? No, it's blue. It's all blue, and then I'm, but I have yellow. So it oh, it made a green. It's cute. Bye. Uh, I'm not going to do this anymore. You're taking the truck? Can I? Yes, yeah, I'm going to park up this school. Um, you are right out of there? All right, so just like that, I put the weight on and I turned it up to number eight on the stove. So um, just to kind of, I'm trying to regulate that pressure. I don't want it too far down, but I don't want it too high. I like my cornbread with jalapenos in it. I bet that's good. And maybe chunks of Monterey Jack. Mimi Gina said that your makeup is gorgeous. Did you tell them about You want me to tell them? 
she wants me to tell you. Mimi has decided that she wants to go to cosmetology school to be an esthetician. So she signed up. Classes start next month. And it's six months. She's going to learn to do facials, microderm abrasion. You said massages for body wraps? Massages, lashes. She said. So that's what she's doing. Mike said high five. Or either Mike just came in. Hi, Mike. <laughs> um, what kind of canner is that? That is a Presto canner, 16 ounce. As you can see, it's well used. I put everything in the dishwasher. And I know you are not supposed to put in the dishwasher. So that's why it looks kind of rusty. But you know what? That bad boy works. Ross says hi. Mimi. Thank you, Roz. Thank you, Gina. Self-employed, I like that. Yes, I was like, Mimi, you got to get you a side hustle. You can't be dependent on people. You got to get you a side hustle. Get something you like to do, huh? Roz, Gina. Oh, did you tell them about barbecue? For me, tell them everything. Will you tell them everything else? <laughs> so she also decided. That since the esthetician school is only six months, she is considering maybe after that going and trying to get her barber's license. I actually have a license in cos. I actually have a license to teach cosmetology. Okay, Miss Shirley, the OG gardener. Mike said, "9 p.m. Still hot outside. I watered my dying garden." Oh, we need to water ours. So you can see it's rocking and I can kind of hear it. But I can hear like, I can't describe it. It just kind of sounds like. So to me, that's a cue that it's building up, looking good. Gina said, do it. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. So it, you should see it start rocking. It did start out just with like a little tip, tilt. And you can see the water that I was talking about on the side is, it stopped. So that's just something that it does beforehand. Ross said, you go girl. I think she's gone. They're going to see the fireworks downtown. They're doing like a firework display. So her and a couple friends are, are going. All right. Can you guys hear it? You really the OG. What don't you do? All right. So... So that has started. Okay, you can't hear it a little. I'm going to let it get up good, and then I'm going to turn it down. But it's 10.05, so I'm starting my timer. This will be done at 10.35. Find a good man. <laughs> you can hear it. All right, I'm going to go turn it down. It's jiggling. So I turned it down to two. It will still hold a good amount of jiggle of pressure, even at two. So I should be good at two. And I think they say... Look for it in writing, but I feel like I've heard people say you just kind of want to hear it jiggle three to four times in a minute. So it doesn't need to be up that loud or that jiggly. I can get a refill. You're going to get a refill for me? Yeah, how much are they? Um, I don't know how much a refill is. So I told y'all we went down to Junk Food Alley. Get my purse. And... 
This is lemonade, a lemonade shake up, y'all. Get my card back. And don't be trying to spend no extra money on it either. Trying to pay it off. Bye. Drive safe. Don't be speeding. Okay. So that's all set to go. I love lemonade. That lemonade is good. They make it right there for you. And it's not really sweet. Make sure you close the door all the way. Because Kodak's looking. Come here. Come here. Temptation, huh? Come here. Miss Shirley, take extra bad ones. Have fun. <laughs> That's big. Love living it. Yes, that is big, Roz. But it's good. It's real good. Especially when it's nice and cold. So, is there anything else anyone would want to see canned up or anything? And I'm getting this recipe from... The Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, 400 Recipes. And I think, so I feel like I've heard somebody say, like, this is the intermediate level. And then the Ball has a more advanced level book. The reason I've never gotten it because I have heard that, bye-bye, a lot of people don't like the recipes in the other books. And I even feel like with this, I still, I don't use 400 recipes. I use about 25. So um, when you are looking at canning books, you do want to make sure that it um, they are using approved recipes. And you might also want to see if what's in there is something that you're actually going to want to can for. I'm just kind of looking this over. So Lydia, are you still there? Did you have your crab, your crab beef stew? I was thinking about some beef stew. That is a favorite. I want to can collards and maybe even some meat. We've done collards. All of them. <laughs> it's just so convenient. Um, I've done the call every time I've done the collards. Or the greens, period, because we've done different types of greens. I always have my mom come over, and I just try to do a big batch, do as much as possible. So she comes over. She usually cleans them for me. Um, we parboil them, and then we get them in that canner. Greens do cook. Do need to pre-pressure can for, I think, like 80 minutes, so it's pretty long. But to be able to just open up that jar, it's so good. <laughs> And beef stew, we like the beef, we like vegetable stew and the beef stew. And I know I need to can some chicken soup, but beef stew is a favorite for us too. Only thing is, for me, or yeah, so it takes 90 minutes to can the meats. So they're processing for a really long time. So if I did it, I would really only be able to, um, Maybe I can prep some jars a couple of days before and then, you know, make the recipe with you and get it in the canner and get that part of it started and then just kind of show you what it'll look like afterwards. But I would not be able to do the entire process um, of canning for 90 minutes. I mean, I could, but it's getting late. <laughs> I am Ms. Clouda. Am I saying that right? Ms. Clouda. Can some collards the other night doing potatoes now. I've seen your videos and lead farmers. They've helped me so much. Thanks for the help and push we can be fools now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you um, 
I don't think I've ever seen you in any chats or on any comments. So thank you so much for popping in and giving some words of encouragement. So you pre-cook the collards, then can them. So my mom's like, you got to parboil them. You got to parboil them and get that bitterness out. And she swears she even tastes it if I don't parboil them. So I just boil them for about 10 minutes and then um, switch the water, take them out of that water, put them in more, put them in some clean water. So that's how I did it. I would like to can chili for cold winter days. I was thinking about canning some chili today. I really was when I was thinking about going through everything. Um, ooh, yeah, chili. <laughs> I personally don't like my chili and I use I use a canned chili hack. So I don't I feel like I would have to can it a little bit and then taste it and go from there. I wouldn't want to can a big batch, but chili sounds great. Yes, makes sense. Yep, the mamas they be knowing. And we like the canned meats. I've used the canned meats for chili, put it in there. I do know one thing to be mindful of is when I can my meat, I put it in beef. I do ground turkey and I'll put it that in chicken broth or I'll do the ground beef and I'll put that in beef broth. Well, this last time when I made chili, I used the canned chili from... I used my home canned chili and I wasn't even thinking about it. I just took that can and dumped it all in there. I didn't drain the broth off out of it. And Mr. was just like, oh, why is it so watery? Why is it so soupy? They be knowing. They do be knowing. So he knew that I did not drain the broth out of that um, meat before I put it in there. So something to be mindful of. I do like to can my meat in broth. I guess I feel like it's better than just sitting in water. At least it's going to soak up some of that seasoning, some of that taste. So um, that's what I do. Do you can any whole meals like soups? I've done chicken soup. You can't can chicken noodles or you can't can noodles. So I've done chicken soup and I've just added my own noodles to it while it's cooking. Um, we've done the beef vegetable. I've done chicken tortilla. All of them have been really good. All of them. Um, and chicken cacciatore. We did that too. That was more of a thicker sauce. It wasn't really like a soup, but it was good. No, I have really young ones. And really can't. Bye-bye. We can watch lives anymore and have to pause and go back several times. Glad to get tonight. Thank you so much. Those young ones will take you out. <laughs> so glad. Like, she's the baby girl. She's 19. So it's so nice to have her um, be self sufficient. Don't have to do everything for her. We made beef stew and it was amazing. Also added chicken and stock. Also canned chicken and stock or bone broth. Um, I actually stopped canning like chicken broth and beef broth. I felt like it was extremely time consuming. You need to, um, when you're canning the broth, the chicken broth especially, you need to take all that broth and let it cool down. That way you can skim all of that fat off the top. And I felt like it added another day to my process because it would need to cool completely down and then skim it off. So I'm all down for vegetable. Let me do vegetable broth. I can do three, four batches of vegetable broth in the time that I could do chicken broth. And then we can always season it with some chicken or beef for you. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Can you hear it steaming? Can you hear it back there rocking? And that's a good pace. It's not too fast, but um, it's still a steady pace. Do you enjoy pickled foods? Does anyone freeze dry? Mr. wants to know. I do like pickled foods. Um, my Mr. likes the pickled okra. 
with my pickling though, I've been kind of experimenting with it because I feel like once I finally do open it up, at least for the cucumbers to pickle, they are mushy. Um, so I'm trying to really preserve that crispness in, um, in a way that doesn't use alum because alum is like an aluminum compound. So I've been trying like bay leaf, um, to kind of see how that is or prepping my pickles beforehand. But yes, I really do like them. Um, how close am I to my watch time? KK, I think I'm at 3,000. I'm at 3,000 hours. I know I could probably pick up more watch time if I actually put more videos out there. But I, I probably sit steady at about 3,000, give or take, <laughs> depending on the day. By far, my favorite food is roasted, creamy butternut squash or sweet potato soup to warm up mm, on cold. Um, Josh, I know Lydia does a um, a fall, fall soup collaboration fall soup collaboration with a bunch of um, content creators and we all just put together our favorite soup. Um, she did a butternut squash soup, but I'm going to need you to get on that collaboration and show that sweet potato soup. Watching it dance, it's hydroponic. <laughs> Hypnotic. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds great, Josh. It really does. That's good. So we need to watch a playlist. Yes, if you could, please. I always forget about those watch hours. I love leek and potato soup. I don't I don't know how I feel about the leeks. <laughs> I got no comments on the leeks. Hypnotic. <laughs> Hypnotic. So we are halfway through our time. We only we have less than 15 minutes to go. So this is going along really good. And then I'll show you guys how I take it off. So you can't just open it. Once it's done, I'm going to have to take it off of that eye because it's an electric stove. So I'll have to take it off of that one. And then the pressure is going to need to fall naturally. You're so right. Chicken broth and any other bone broth takes a long time, but we process our chicken. I have too much on hand. Yep. Yep. If I actually had chickens and processed them, I would do that too. You've got to use it some kind of way. I've considered veggie broth on my list now. Autocorrect was like, um, you mean hydroponic. Let me help you. <laughs> All right, guys. So, yes, 10 more minutes and we can take it off of there. And like I said, that is a really good pace back there. So if any of you are new to pressure canning, you can see that weight back there rocking. And that weight is what is going to add the pressure to allow the, the water to boil above 220 degrees, which is going to kill off any bacteria, microorganisms, botulism from that food, those jars, to make it safe to be shelf stable. Yay! That was a mouthful, huh? <laughs> Um, I just want to see something in my book. And like I said, this is pretty loud. If I were to go in the other room, I would still be able to hear it just, just fine. So if you're using a, um, what's my oldest can? Can? 
we go through our stuff pretty fast. We don't save it for a rainy day. Um, I'm just going to take a guess. I'm like going through my shelves. Something that we don't like. The apple butter. No, the applesauce. We didn't like the applesauce. So the applesauce is... <laughs> The applesauce is probably from like 2018. I don't know. We tried to. Um, that was in my early days of canning. And I, I felt like I didn't even use like a book canning recipe. Um, I was just kind of eyeballing it and doing whatever. And that, that stuff is sweet. Sugar. <laughs> and I've never made applesauce after that. So that's probably our oldest can, and honestly, we we not go eat it. <laughs> I'd eat it all too. We do, we do. That pantry is not for a just because day. That pantry is not for Armageddon. It's kept, it's kept stocked, but we go down there. <laughs> we eat our food. So I'm just reading my book here and it's talking about pressure canning. So I'm not making it up. It says, unlike fruits and pickle food, low acid foods such as vegetables, meat, poultry, seafood, and recipes using those ingredients require greater heat exposure to destroy harmful toxin producing bacterial spores. Um, research in the mid and late 1900s revealed that processing jars of low acid foods in boiling water, 212 degrees, is neither practical nor adequate to destroy toxin producing bacterial spores. The only practical and recommended method today is to process low acid foods using a pressure canner, which um, elevates temperatures to 240 degrees. So that's why some meals you have to pressure can and other meals you have to water bath can. So even though I was using tomatoes, which tomatoes are safe for water bath canning, if you add vinegar, citric acid, or lemon juice. But because I was not adding vinegar, citric acid, or lemon juice, and I had the okra in there, which is a low acid food, it needed to be pressure canned. Put it on hot oatmeal in the winter with cinnamon. I bet that would be good. That would be good. I might, I might, I might try that, Mike. Have you had any issue finding candy supplies um, or it being higher? I've run into it being higher priced. Um, we stay right around the corner from a Kroger. So I had just ran over there to grab a couple jars and they wanted $14 for um, a case of 12 pack of jars. And usually I can get them for about a dollar each. So um, I was like, mm, or under a dollar, sorry, each. So like that costs too much. Walmart, I can get a case for like $8. However, it was probably about two weeks ago and Walmart's prices had went up to $10. Supplies, honestly, I haven't really been looking for too much supplies because um, probably about two or two years ago, we really stocked up on jars. I have some cases of jars down there that I haven't even touched yet. And like I said, we do so much canning and um, we go through everything that I have, like just jars that I've used already. And then um, we buy those little packs of ball lids. So. I haven't run into it because I haven't really had to go shopping for supplies unless I'm looking for a specific size, which were the little four ounce jelly jars. I got to go. Good times as always. I'll watch the replay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Josh. Um, have a wonderful night. So you can water bath can 
So you can water bath okra if you make it in a vinegar brine? Yes, if you pickle it. Um, a vinegar brine is pickling, and you absolutely can. And I have done that before, and we just did, like, pickle okra. Actually, actually, I did a video on it. It was alive, so it probably was about three or four weeks from today. I'm trying to think of the date. I don't know what the date would have been. I think it would have been the 2nd of July. The 2nd of July, I did a live and I pickled okra. I also pickled onions and I pickled carrots. And those were all water brass canned. All right, guys. So the timer only needs four more minutes. Your cans are cheaper. Ours are 13 or up. Wow. I'm going to stock up eventually too. Makes sense. Yes. Um, off season. If you can wait until like December, um, the prices should start to go down. Everybody's getting their harvest in now and everybody wants some. Um, but yeah, I would, if you can wait, maybe try start looking to stock up as early as December. Um, I would say between December and April would be a good time to stock up. They should go down in price. Make sure you smash that like button. Thank you, Josh. A couple more minutes. You're doing good. Making good on time. This is going to be good. <laughs> you can still hear it. It's got a good. Looks like it froze. It did. It froze back there for a second, but it's got good little rock to it. Now I don't know if you can, if you notice it, but behind me, I opened my microwave door because the pressure. The steam from it um, has messed with the, um, like the electric, I don't know what you call it. The electric, the computer, whatever. And the microwave actually stopped working for a while. And uh, Mr. had went and bought another one, the exact same one. <laughs> and he was like, let me just turn this on. And he turned it on and it worked fine. So we took the other one back. But um, we think it had to do with my canning and the amount of steam that goes right up um, on it. So I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but actually the microwave door is open. I have it propped open with a spoon. I will leave it like that on, until I'm done canning. I'll just leave it open just to be on the safe side. So if you ever see that door open, like, what's she doing? That's what I'm doing. I'm just protecting the computer, or the, the keypad, whatever it's called. All right, so it's time. Let's keep this back. And I am going to lift this up. And move it. There goes my spoon, y'all. But I want you keep an eye on this. This will not go down right now. It's locked in there. So when this goes down, we can remove this. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Moisture in your electronics. Yeah. Yeah. There, 
now you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna open this all the way. There. So you can see that little knob and I'll even hear it. Um, you'll just hear it when it falls. But what it's doing right now is all that pressure is releasing naturally. Um, I feel like early in my canning days, I used to just take that little, take the weight off and then all the steam's up in there. Um, don't do that. Don't be me. Don't be me then, be me now. <laughs> but um, yeah, just let that release naturally. You can even hear it, hear how it has slowed down. You can hear your jars still in there bubbling and rocking. So, and what it's also doing is it's starting to cool down because you could not take those jars out of there and just um, have them ready to go. And I feel like this is why sometimes I want a second pressure canner because you know this ad, this is adding more time to the process, and then I still have to. Even once I unload it, I have to load it back up and let that pressure go back up. So there are times like when I'm doing spaghetti sauce or beef stew, when I'm doing big batches of something, I do think about having the second pressure canner. Hi, Michael. Yes, my pressure canner is well. <laughs> that bad boy has been through the ringer, but I would tell you, I've probably had it since 2017, 17. One twenty-two, so it's about five years old, and it hasn't given me any issues, no issues. My jaws can be cracked by taking that top off. So what happens is those jars are super hot. Like I just read, is um, when you're pressure canning, your water is going above boiling on our stove. So when we boil water on our stove, that water is never going to go above 212 degrees. You can boil water for 75 hours on your stove. It's never going to go above 212 degrees. With pressure canning, um, it's going to go to 240 degrees. You need that extra heat to kill off the microorganisms, the bacteria, the botulism that could still be present in your jars. So you need that extra heat. So that's why we pressure can certain things. That water goes up to 240 degrees. So those jars, the liquid in those jars are at 240 degrees. So if you expose it to the cooler air out here, or that pressure releases and that hot air escapes and that cool air comes in, um, those jars will get what is called thermal shock. And it's just what it is. You shocked them, you scared them, but they can break. And I've had that happen before. I've even happened had it happen where I tried to can frozen corn and I had like a big bowl and I knew that in the center of my bowl that those jars or that that corn was still a little bit cool, but it didn't bother me. I didn't think anything about it at the time. Well, I loaded all those jars up in that little frozen pack because, you know, it was in the center of the jar and um, not realizing that even though I added boiling water to my jars because it was still a little bit frozen on that one particular jar, that water was immediately cooler than the rest of the water, which cooled down the jar because you want to heat up your jars. I heated up my jars before I filled them. And because now the temperature is off on that one particular jar, when I took it out, that bottom fell out and there went everything. And you always know it's thermal shock because it's usually like a clean break, super smooth a clean break. So that's why you want to have hot food, hot jars, hot water. You want to make sure you're doing all that. And that's just why you want to just let that pressure come down naturally. That way you're not shocking your, your jars. You've done all that work. You don't want to lose anything. I hope I explained it well. Let me know if I was just talking in circles. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking in circles. 
Um, Ross asks, why do you have the microwave door open? So, um, I feel like I said that. But um, with the steam from the canner, our microwave is electric. It's a fairly new microwave. And it at one point shorted out the computer in the door and we couldn't use it. Marcus went and got an, and it, it was probably like six months. We just didn't use it. But um, he went and got a new one just recently. And he was like, let me try this, turn it on. And when he turned it on, it worked just fine. So he took the other one back. But we figured that it was because of the canning for the steam. So just to be on the safe side, when I'm canning, I just open up the door. That way the computer on the door isn't right over that 240 degree steam, which it does. It's, it's got some heat over it. So just to be on the safe side. Makes sense. Very informative. Very good. Um, I feel like I'm missing some. I'm yet to pressure can. Got to just jump in it and do it. Yes, you're going to love it. You are going to love it, especially with your corn. Corn in the fresh corn in the pressure canner is so good. It is so good. You're going to love it, Gina. I know you are. You can do it, Gina. I was nervous. I was nervous too. I still have. <laughs> I just say I've gotten over my nerves. I'm not nervous about it at all. I love it. I love it. Yes, I'd love a second canner. It takes so long to do a batch of crops. I have to research what to do. Uh -oh. So Unicorn Lady, first pressure canner. I first pressure canned when Lead Farmer did it live with over a thousand people. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Oh my goodness. I can just imagine that chat just... <laughs> Very good info, makes sense, very informative. Scared them. I'll scare me. I'm scared about the broken jars. Don't be scared about it. I have broken some jars. I, I'm not perfect. I have broken some jars and you just, just pick the jar up, throw it away, get all your other stuff out of there and you just clean it out, throw it away. And just start over. Just a learning experience. Just got to decide what's up to pressure can first. I always wondered why. Why a microwave? I know. It's like, come on now. And like I said, I would love an all-American canner. But I can't put an all-American canner up under there. It's too big. Have fun with it. Yes, have fun with it. Gina, do the easiest thing to get some grape juice packed in sugar and make sure, make some grape jam. I felt like for me, the easiest thing to can was the green beans. And once I got over, now, when I first got the canner, I was doing all type of illegal stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing stuff. Don't be, don't be owed me. And then once I actually learned what I was doing, I canned green beans and I loved it. And then the second thing I pressure canned was the sweet corn. Hi, LaDaysha. Hi, it's been so long since I've seen you. How you doing? How you doing? You ready to come back to work? We miss you. <laughs> but um, um, we canned sweet corn and I mean, it was fresh off the cob. I'm not a farmer. I get everything from the store. Um, but it was fresh off the cob and just the taste of it. It was great. And after that, I was hooked. Sign me up. I want a pressure can. 
You got a new sub, TT. The wife and I have been growing and canning a few years, but I am still learning. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. It's a fire hazard over the stove, y'all. My husband works contracting and it's always, wow, for real. Yes, yeah, steaming or anything like that has him replacing or removing. Wow, I did not know that. I was at Let Farmers Canning Session. I just watched. I always feel like, like I can watch, but I'm like, I can't, I can't even say hi in the chat. Those chats are just, they moving. You got to have some speedy fingers if you're trying to say something in there. So like, I'll watch, but I won't say anything. <laughs> I feel intimidated when I'm on like the really big channels in their lives. So I can still hear everything in the canner going. I can hear um, like the stuff inside boiling. But as you can see, that valve has not gone down yet. So we're just going to leave it be. But you can probably move it. that. So even if you press down on it, it still pops back up. There's still steam in there. So I'm going to leave it be. And the sweet lady had my husband and I make the jump. <laughs> now we stay up every weekend and sometimes a couple times a week. There have been times where my mister, his old shift is he used to get up at two o'clock in the morning um, be at the truck yard by three and then he was gone and he'd be gone till about four o'clock. But there are times that when he was working those hours, it would be two in the morning and I'm still up canning beef stew. Usually it's beef is one of the stews. Cause when I do either the beef stew or the vegetable stew, I want like 30, 40 jars. I don't want to do any more for the year. So I do those in like, I'm doing a big batch. It's going to be an all-nighter when I'm doing those. I'll pop by and visit soon. Thank you. We are not down the hill anymore. We are at CBO. So if you're... I used to work with Ladesha, guys. Um, she moved away. She abandoned us. But um, just so you know, we're in a different building. Listen. His live chat goes fast. I can see Gita saying that. Listen, I know. Like I said, I, I don't even be saying anything. <laughs> I'll be watching the chat, but really I'm just there to listen because it be gone. <laughs> I notice you do not put in empty jars to fill up the space where you did not have enough says photos, but I believe you said jars to fill the canner. Have you ever had a problem with the jars? Ever been a problem with jars cracking together and breaking? I never had a problem with it. I actually didn't even know that was a thing until I went to my canning class um, last month and they were doing the empty jars. And they said it was because you don't want them putting together too fast or rocking and they might smack together and break. I've never had that happen. Um, and I guess it's just, it's not a habit. Everything's kind of like a muscle memory. And I wouldn't be opposed to adding in the empty jars, but um, I've just never done it before. And I've never ran into an issue with that. You'll see when we open this up, I haven't had an issue out, out of it. Yes. I'm reading Michael's um, comment. We have stayed up late waiting for the pressure to go down and listening for that pop. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Sometimes you'd be so tired. It's just like, oh, how long has it been? Oh, wait a minute. Did I fall asleep? Alexa, how much more time is on timer? What just happened? <laughs> 
I have been there. I actually have a video. It was my very first vegetable soup video. And I feel like it was horrible. I believe I had like the camera face in front instead of facing the other way. It was just like, but that one was an all-nighter. <laughs> that one was an all-nighter. I can remember Kodak was a puppy. And like I was, cause we were still letting him out like every two hours. He was so tiny. I can remember being outside at like two in the morning and then five in the morning. I'm canning and I'm letting him outside and I'm doing all types of stuff. I don't think I've stayed up that late since. Yep. You got to hear that pop. <laughs> and you should, it should be going off any minute now. I'd say definitely within the next five minutes, um, that little, that valve will fall down. And then that's going to let me know it's safe to take that gauge off the weight. If I took the gauge off now, there would still be some steam in it. There's still, it's still pressurized. So that's why we kind of just wait for that, um, that valve to fall. And then you can take it off. And what I like to do is I will open up the canner and just kind of sit it, you know, just kind of turn it and just push it a little bit. So the top is still on there, but um, it's not all the way off. Do we need to do the empty jars? I just did four pints by themselves, but I feel like I would be nervous with them all busting. I'm going to say use your judgment. I don't, I've even canned like one jar in there. And like I said, I've never had a problem with it, but every canner is different. You got altitude, you got um, are you using the gas or electric stove? There's a lot of different variables. So like I said, I've never done it, but I do know that like they do say you should put the empty jars in there to take up that space. Times I've waited just to turn it off and go to bed and take it out in the morning. I have done that too. I have done that too, but then I heard at that class I was at and they were saying you shouldn't do it because um, your jars could ab absorb the water. And I believe for a pressure canner, that's really not going to be a problem because at least for my pressure canner, I'm not filling the pressure canner. I'm not filling the water above the jars. The water is down here. But if you're water bath canning, you, that water is at least an inch above. So I've heard them say that you don't want to do it if it's an inch above, you know, just go to sleep and do it in the morning because your canner, your jar could absorb some of that water, making the contents inside not as sanitary as you think they may be. It's the first time I've ever heard that. Like I said, I've done it before, but I have been more mindful to not do that. Uh, okay, just kidding. <laughs> I'm so tired. We waiting on the pop. <laughs> um, what I'm about to do. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Thank you so much for staying up with me. Um, I really appreciate you popping by. I've enjoyed your chat. So come on anytime. I really had a pleasure chatting with you today. And hopefully soon we should hear that pop. But good night. And thank you anyone that stayed up with me. I know it's late. Late night candy. <laughs> All right. So... I think that's all I got in this book for now. We are 10 minutes till 11, so we've been on for almost two hours. I feel like I at least need to go load my dishwasher up or something, but we're good. We're good. Any minute now, it's going to just fall. Gina, you will have to let me know when you start to make your kombucha. 
I'm going to have to come back in the morning to see how it turned out. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Homestead, Homestead in the Hood. Peace and blessings. Love you. <laughs> but yeah, Gina, we don't have to do like a live a live or a phone conference or something because I feel like I can't just jump into this kombucha. I need step-by-step -step instructions. And I know she sent me the written instructions, but I need I need somebody. <laughs> But once you get it the first time, you should be good to go. I should get some tea. I need to get some tea. I don't know if I want black tea or green tea. Oh, it just went down. So I'm going to remove this. And this is hot, so I'm just going to sit it to the side. Unlock it. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Girl, that's why I haven't started yet. I know. But I know you can still see the steam coming out of there. And I can hear the jars and everything. So I'm just going to let that sit for about five minutes before I even um, start to mess with those jars. And what I'm doing is just kind of letting this cool air get into there. And I can smell it. Can you hear that? I covered it back up because ideally you should not smell it. And I can hear it. It's like, which lets me know I got some siphoning going on in there. It is too hot. Those jars are too hot. So I might just have to do a short, you guys, and, um, you know, really let this sit for another maybe 20 minutes or something like that because it's just too hot in there and it's cool. We've got the air conditioner on. I'm going to say it's probably 70 degrees in here. So it's cool in here. Those jars, those jars like, oh, oh. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> And I don't want all that tomato juice to come out, which is why I said I can smell it. If I can smell it, it's coming out. So I think I am going to do that. Um, I'll just do a short and maybe do a follow up with it. And you can see how they turn out. Um, Lodacia says, I know I haven't been on here the whole time. What is the significance of pressure canning? So with pressure canning, you can... Um, with canning, you have boiling water, boiling water bath canning, which is basically just a pot with boiling water. Um, that boiling water is going to be 212 degrees. Um, certain foods need a higher temperature in order to kill off all of the, the bad bacteria, the microorganisms, the botulism, especially botulism, you need to be able to kill that off to make it shelf stable. So you have to have a higher um, temperature when canning. The only way to achieve that is to pressure can it. When you add that pressure, um, the temperature is going, going to go above 212 degrees. It's going to get up to 240 degrees. And that's going to be enough to kill it. So if you are canning vegetables, if you are canning meat or meat products, so um, chicken broth, vegetable broth, I can't water bath can vegetable broth. It's a meat product to vegetable product. Um, only other way around it is to pickle it. So pickling it is going to add that acidity level. So now it's going to be a high acid food and not a low acid food or adding lemon juice, which is high in acid, or adding citric acid. I'm a citric acid girl. Um, I really don't do lemon juice too often. But adding one of those three will make it safe for water bath canning. Just make sure you're using a approved recipe. But yes, you do need to um, use a pressure canning 
use a pressure canner if you're canning certain foods in order to make it shelf stable. You want to make sure you're killing off all that bacteria because you don't want to open the jar up and you get sick. You get your family sick. You had a hospital stay or you think you did something and you gave that to your neighbor and now she's sick and she feeling some kind of way and you feeling some kind of way because she got sick. You just want to be on the safe side. Everybody be on the safe side. Make sure you're using proven recipes and you're using those techniques. Um, I always say just because it's on YouTube does not mean it's safe. Just because it's on YouTube does not mean it's right. I can get on YouTube and be like, let me show you how to win, how to earn a million dollars and retire by this time next week. And I give you all these steps. That don't make it true. <laughs> That don't make it true just because I said it. So um, make sure you're using proven recipes. And like I said, just because I said it, you do not have to trust what I'm saying. Um, facts. Facts. Um, check out resources. Um, if you have a county extension office, my day one is the Center for National Home Food Preserving. Um, do it. <laughs> Do it. I need a bill. <laughs> yeah, I bet you I get some watch hours then. <laughs> but yeah, it's just just check your um, proven sources, the um, USDA, all of that stuff. Just make sure you're um, checking your sources because just because somebody says do it does not mean it's right. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna check these jars one more time. One just sealed. You see it is still boiling. super hot. So be careful. And these are all the, even though they're not full, I still positioned it in a way where all the jars are touching. So they're not rocking too much. I saw something, but that was just the ball logo. See, these did thicken up, which I knew they were. So there's our tomatoes and okra. Heard it pop, good. And yes, it's still bubbling. Don't touch those jars. See them bubbling and we should see here a couple more. Um, pop, but do not touch those jars. Those jars are hot. They just came from 240 degrees. So they're hot. let them be. And you do want to leave them be for 12 to 24 hours until they all seal. You might not hear every single one of them. There are times where I don't hear every single one of them, but when I get up in the morning or when I look at them after the 12 hours, they all have sealed. What I will do is um, tomorrow night, I'll visually see if everything is down and then I will take the rings off. I will give it a good like pry. It should not just pop open. You need something to pry this open with. So I would try to open it. They all good. I'll wash them and um, put tomatoes and okra and the date on there. So they're good to go. 
So Ladacia says, okay, so you're basically making homemade canned foods. That's right. Homemade canned foods. Exactly what it is. Okay, OG, going to bed. Good night. Good night. Um, I'm going to let y'all go. It's been two hours. Thank you so much for staying with me while I can this. This was fun. Um, I did say I wasn't sure if I'm going to can next week. I will let you know. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll just, I'll just do the Creole sauce. So if I don't do it next week, I will do it in two weeks. But either way, I will let you know what I'm canning and I'll post the ingredients if anyone wants to can along with me. Thank you all for sticking with me these two hours. I know it's late, but I will see you. Have a wonderful night.